you guys, and welcome back to our channel. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. We're gonna be talking about everyone's favorite topic of temptation. <laughs> and I feel like temptation typically is put into this box of lust and of sexual course sin. in sexual sin. That's, mm -hmm. that's a big one, right? But there's so much more to that. I feel like we can struggle with being tempted into laziness, tempted into greed, tempted into comparison or envy, gossip. tempted into gossip and so many more. And so we're going to be going through just some strategies of how to resist that temptation because I don't know if you all can feel it. I don't know if it's just us. I don't know if it's my little bubble. Maybe the algorithm has found me there, but I, I'm seeing a lot of believers. Wake up like wake up, mm -hmm. myself included. Because yeah. just to be clear, as we talk about this, this is stuff that we're trying to actively practice. So yeah. like, we don't have it all figured out, but these are things that are waking us up where mm -hmm. we're like, wow, I can do so much better where it's not about flirting with temptation and seeing yeah. like how much we can get away with. I, Tori said it before, it's it's not about how close you can get to the edge. It's and how close we can get to Jesus. Yes, that's great. And so that's what we wanna be talking about in this video is just mm -hmm. kind of exploring strategies for us to resist temptation because we have been made too comfortable. Yeah, and it's a lot of those like sneaky little temptations that mm -hmm. you're not even <clears throat> overly aware of if you're not like taking every thought captive. It's almost like with complaining, you don't even notice how mm -hmm. much you're complaining until, until you yeah. go on a complaining fast and yeah. you're like, I'm not gonna complain for an entire week or an entire month and then you realize yeah. how much you're actually tempted to complain. Yeah, I'm complaining that I can't complain. Like this is the worst. <laughs> I'm just, anyways. So two quick things before we jump into the first one. Number one, this video is sponsored by Hillsdale, which offers free online courses, but more on that later. And number two, and this one is like really important one, so stick here with me. There's a verse, it's Mark chapter nine, verse 47, and it says this. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast away. And yeah. so I wanna be clear with what that part says, and if your eye causes you to sin. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking about lust or greed or comparison, whatever that may be, we're not casting blame to social media. Yeah. We're not casting blame on money. We're not casting blame on people. We're casting blame on our own sinful nature. Yeah. It says, if your I causes you to sin. So if I cause myself to sin, if I'm sinning against myself, if if there's something about me that's causing me to do this, mm -hmm. that's what we want the focus to be, is, is to look at yourself. Yeah. So. And it's also not a shame game. I want us all to celebrate conviction. And so when conviction comes, mm -hmm. we celebrate it because it means that the Holy Spirit is at work alive, <clears throat> breathing inside of us, and it leads us to repentance, and repentance leads us to pivoting. And so we all want to pivot. 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 Okay, you wanna jump in? Yes. Okay, the first one we're gonna talk about is envy and comparison, because I feel like this is the sneaky one that we all can lean into really quickly in today's day and age with social media just being mm -hmm. so prevalent, <clears throat> and us having a window into so many people's lives that you used to not have. And so I think it's very easy for us to compare our everyday mundane to other people's highlight reels that they're sharing on social media. And yeah, I just know that even for us as parents, like we're not sharing when we're having like hard moments, right? That's like not what we're always just like, oh yeah, let me grab a camera right now and document this moment. <laughs> and so. Yeah, that's a very real thing for us because it's kind of like, wow, we want to be real, mm -hmm. but it's also, this moment's really hard. I'm not thinking, let me break out my camera. So you guys do tend to see the yeah. highlights, but there is yeah. something that Tori and I talked before this video and I think she has one of the best ways to fight against the temptation to be uh, envious or to compare against mm -hmm. other people. Yeah, so something we always love to say is that celebration cancels comparison because as we choose to celebrate the blessings that God has bestowed on someone else's lives, it's like a slap in the face to the <clears> enemy <throat> because in Proverbs 14:30 it says, a heart at peace gives life to the body but envy rots the bones. Mm. And so when we slip into comparison, 
That is literally an envious spirit inside of us, which is poison to our body. It is literally rotting our bones. It's not producing anything good inside of us. But instead, when we decide to celebrate someone, not only are we now in community with that person that is blessing, but we're speaking <clears throat> life. And when we speak life, we speak blessing, and that is nourishing, not only to our spirit, but also to them. And I just know that we experienced that so much when we were trying to have a baby and I would celebrate the friends in our lives that but it was hard have, it was hard yes, it's not it was to like say a, that this is easy yeah, it was an I I watched Tori sorry to interrupt you but I just didn't want to glaze over that I watched her go from tears of mourning to tears of joy mm -hmm. for I mean because it seemed like everyone in the, <laughs> in the it was getting pregnant yeah. and we we're just like wow yeah and I remember friends being so sensitive to Tori it's mm -hmm. so sweet yeah. and I don't want to make it about this but it's just and her having to remind her spirit that God's got me mm -hmm. and I can celebrate this person's victory yeah I think that that's that's something really incredible for your soul where it yeah. frees you yeah. from the demand that could be an idol mm -hmm. in your life of yeah. saying I need this thing yeah and it frees you to say oh wow I can celebrate other people because I know my father's got me and yeah. so starting so you go it. to the baby showers you host the baby showers you do the thing because I genuinely feel like it's that like I don't want the enemy to steal my joy inside of this. And now I look back and all of the women <clears throat> and families that we celebrated in that season, they celebrated us to the 10th degree. And now we get to do life with them and learn from them because they got the blessing just a little bit ahead of us. <clears throat> and now we get to like learn and glean from them. And so yeah. it was just a blessing in so many different ways. Yeah, a, a few smaller ways and you all know this, but I want to encourage you to practice it. That if you need to like mute people on social media or unfollow them or take social media fasts, mm -hmm. because I don't think we were designed to get this information. And transparently, yeah. this is a weird, a weird way to talk about this, but our podcast, Mornings of the Masters, it's a daily devotional podcast. We created it because back in 2020, when so much fear was being spread, mm -hmm. we were like, wow, how can we share something encouraging every single day? Yeah. So it was like, okay, if people are going to be taking in information, let's at least do battle with all the hard information people are giving and giving them something that's full of light. Yeah. So I say that is because you have to really be discerning what you're allowing your eyes to look at because yep. that'll control your mind and it'll it'll like dominate your heart. Yep. And so being willing to say, hey, I'm gonna take a break here. Hey, I'm gonna unfollow here. Hey, I'm gonna mute here. There's nothing wrong with doing that. And then the, the final thing we'll say on this one is that I had to keep reminding both of us and myself particularly that God has not made a mistake. Mm -hmm. I have a unique life. He, I, he has a unique purpose for me that's not their life. I don't want to live their life. I want to live the life that God has for me. Oh, but their life looks more comfortable. Oh, but their life looks more fun. Oh, but their no, it's like, I want the life that God has for me because I know he's not making a mistake with me. I don't need to maximize my earthly experiences on this side of heaven because I know I'll have eternal joy with him forever. And so I can dig my heels in and say, no, there is that temptation to look over there and be like, wow, the grass looks awfully greener over there. But no, it's like, I want to be where he has planted me. Mm -hmm. I want want the grass around me to gr grow and turn green because yeah. he is watering me and it's overflowing into those around me. Yeah. And so he's not making a mistake on your life. Yeah. Interrupting the video to tempt you with some of Hillsdale's online courses. Tor and I just started a new one right now. It's called Ancient Christianity. And I just had to share this bit of encouragement because basically whenever I think of like biblical times, it feels so... Um, it feels so long ago. It feels so detached from our reality right now. But the way that we're working through the course, it's like brought to life the walk of the Israelites, the political changes that are happening in those geographical areas. But it's like really giving context of like, oh wow, this actually happened. Like the way Jesus was a baby, he was there. Like this is such, it's so interesting the way things are unfolding. And the, the, the course that we're currently working through, he just unpacked that there's some like parallels to the, the, the walk of the Israelites and actually our modern day Christian walk. And I'll play this clip right here. In fact, at one point they had decided that they no longer wanted God as their king. They wanted a human king. And this was in 1 Samuel 8. They asked God for a human king. And what happens with those kings? Well, they ultimately lead 
the people of Israel astray. And that clip actually really stuck out to me. Like I had actually, I had to pause in that moment. I was just like, wow, the Israelites were struggling with this idea of like a monotheistic God. They were struggling with this idea of like one God and they eventually said to God and said, we want a human God. And I was like, well, okay, I don't see us, you know, you and me saying, oh yeah, God, we want, we want someone else, but we do. We do so with the idols in our life, with the demanding of, of more money more prestige, more accomplishment, more comfort, a better relationship, cooler friends. We do so many different ways where we're expressing our discontentment and we're, we're expecting something else physically, world, to mean something to us that it's not meant to mean. We're demanding to God, what you've given me is not enough, give me something else. And that, I just paused right there. I was like, wow, this is this is heavy. I need to chew on that a bit. And so if you are just looking to be encouraged in the faith, and if you're looking to uh, dictate where you look in terms of avoiding temptation, what will like edify your relationship with God, look no further than Hillsdale's online courses. Go to hillsdale.edu slash masters to check them out. They've been deeply encouraging to us. Every time we put one on, we walk away with such a depth of, of thought or we're kind of chewing on something a bit more versus whenever we just kind of glaze over and just throw on easy sugar-coated Netflix or whatever that may be, um, this always feels like it leaves us walking away considering God more in our daily walk rather than the opposite of not considering God more. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is greed and materialism because I feel like it kind of flows off of comparison. Mm -hmm. I think a lot <laughs> of times when we're dealing with comparison, it's because what's behind the comparison, what's at the root of the comparison and envy is a spirit of greed. Mm -hmm. It's, I want the thing that they have. And so a question that Chad always says is like, what's behind the chair? Like yeah. this might be the thing, like the envy, the, the comparison, but what's behind the envy and comparison? And it might be because you're actually struggling with a spirit of greed or materialism. Yeah, or fear that you won't have enough or fear Worry. God won't provide or fear yeah. of whatever that may be. Mm -hmm. So there's always something behind it. Yeah. Um, I think what, uh, there's this quote that I love. It's like, no person has ever became poor from giving. Mm -hmm. And I know that for us, yeah. we have checks and balances when it comes to our income and finding ways to be generous, to make sure it's like, no, that's not for you. Like mm -hmm. this is a blessing to us and through yeah. us. Yeah. And so that's a huge thing for us. I remember I was so encouraged encouraged. I don't remember, I think it was John Piper and I, I don't remember the name of his ministry, but essentially this ministry was bringing in like a lot of money, mm -hmm. like millions of dollars. And he has a board of directors. And I heard this story and basically at the end of every year, like October, November, December, they would get together and they would decide how they're going to give away all the millions of dollars. Yeah. And so it wasn't a matter of obtaining that resource of a money it was how what they're going to do with it it was yeah. the heart posture to it yeah. and so they have checks and balances to where no like they, they can't use any of that money unless it's approved by the board of directors yeah and so i think when it comes to greed and materialism one of the best ways to go about this to battle it is to start giving Maybe. and mm -hmm. tori and i actually have a generosity account and there's not even a lot in there but it reminds us like no we have to give this away it's assigned it, yeah it's giving. a it's yeah. a separate bank account and you can change the name on ours and it literally says giving and so we have to we have to listen for ways because it'll remind it our eyes like open to like you're looking mm -hmm. for ways to give too. Yeah, we yeah, love you, it. you're a lot more open. You're a lot yeah. less like empty handed. And again, kind of like what we're talking about regarding how comparison and how it'll like remind your soul that God's got me. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are in a place of, of giving, it reminds you that, hey, God's gonna provide, we're gonna yeah. be okay. And I think we need that daily reminder. Yeah. And that's something that I really recommend is just forming a generosity account, yeah. putting whatever number that looks like in there, whether it's $10, $50, $100, $5,000, dollars i do not care, but just making sure that you're looking for opportunities to be generous with this. Mm -hmm. It'll like heal your heart from having like a scarcity mindset. Cause the Bible talks about greed like 10 more times than it talks about lust and sexual morality. Mm -hmm. So this is something that we need to talk about. And God the church is, about. yeah, the church is really quick to bash mm -hmm. on sexual morality but the church doesn't talk about greed a lot. And so this is something that's that's incredibly serious. Yeah, and I truly believe that your gratitude for where God has you now will drive your giving. 
and how like the level in which you're grateful for the blessings that God has given you and you recognize how much God has given you, it will drive you to give even more. It's the same in like forgiveness. It's like once you recognize how much Mm -hmm. you were in desperate need of forgiveness, that you were dead and you were made alive, then you're much more quick to forgive because you recognized how much you were desperate for it and how much it's been given to you. And so as you look around at your daily blessings, as you look back at his faithfulness in the past, it allows you to have eyes to see how great God has been to you. And then it's like, I can't help but not give right it's like that gratitude the depth of gratitude will drive your excitement for giving yeah and it and it really takes like financial resources or money off the pedestal of your heart it reminds you that that's not the ultimate resource Mm -hmm. the ultimate resource is god Mm -hmm. and so it'll make that mean less to you which is probably healthy Mm -hmm. and then you you get a a healthy perspective on it which is like okay this is a great tool to build god's kingdom and then that's it yeah okay and then the next one we want to talk about is (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. Also, um, I think our neighbor just started mowing his lawn. So if you hear that in the background, apologize. Sorry. Um, okay. The next one is gossip. I feel like this one is a really sneaky temptation because it can lurk its way into conversations where you like pass over the conversation line and you slip into the gossip line really, really quickly. And as Mm -hmm. believers, as women and sons of the living God, like this is not how he has called us to live. And there's two scriptures that I want to talk to you guys about before we dive in. But the first is Ephesians 4 29 that says, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up. So if your speech is not building others up, then we need to be aware of that. <clears throat> and then another verse is James 5, 9. It says, don't grumble against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is <coughs> standing at the door. And I just love that. Don't grumble against your brothers and sisters in Christ. Build them up, encourage them in truth. It's not something that we need to be partaking in, in the kingdom of God. And it's so hurtful. Yeah. I think the one I'm feeling for this is actually to go like really deep and to remind yourself of what power the tongue has, Mm -hmm. has the power of life and death, blessings and curse. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the beginning, God said, let there be light and there was light. And so you can see that for the purely righteous and holy being he is, his word becomes real. Mm -hmm. His word is real. And so things happen because he spoke it. And so for us, we have to understand that we have a lot of power Mm -hmm. through and like through our, through our mouth. And are we building people up or are we tearing them down? It's a really hard thing to struggle with because kind of like Tori said, it's easy to kind of be in the middle, which is where maybe you're at a small group and you're just like, Oh, I think we should really like, uh, Oh, they need, pray for him. they need prayer, yeah. you know? And so this is one of those things that whenever we have to give an account for everything that we said and did, everything that we said, mm-hmm. that's scary. Yeah. Cause I know I've gossiped and I want to, I just want to repent of that. Yeah. I'm like, God, I'm sorry. I said that about your child. Yeah. That's his child. I'm sorry. I said that. That was not good heart. of me. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I just, I just encourage you to recognize the power it has and am I being helpful or am I being hurtful? Yeah. And I think something that helps take that even a, another layer deeper is to understand that we're all on this journey together. Mm-hmm. We're all on this floating rock in space trying to figure life out and we're yeah. all at different points in our walks. Mm-hmm. And so you may be a lot further along in your walk and you may be looking at that person who maybe just started believing or maybe they've been struggling with this pesky thing for a long time mm-hmm. and you're so quick to want to judge them based on where you are or your convictions. Right. Now, granted, I do think we should all be sanctified into the image of Christ, yeah. but God's working on them. Mm-hmm. And so we want to edify the work he's doing for them and yeah. build them up and encourage it. Just right. like this whole video for us is like, hey, this is a healthy conviction. Yeah. This is us wanting to do better yeah. and just realizing that you know, in video, this is weird. In video games, there's this thing called friendly fire. So if you're playing like a like a war video game, you can turn on a setting to where if you accidentally were to, you know, aim at your teammate, it won't hurt them. 
right? Because you can set a setting. It's like, so I think we need to remember, we need to remember like the friendly fire rule. Like, hey, we're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. Let's help each other, not hurt each other. Yeah. So good. Okay, and then the next one is the hotter topic, which is lust. Oh, that is hot. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I'm very lame. I'm full of it. I feel like, again, this one's coming back to, are we guarding our eyes? Are we guarding our ears? What are we watching? What are we listening to? What areas are we placing ourselves in? Like we should not think more highly than we ought of ourselves, right? We need to be aware of the things that we are tempted by. And if that is lust, if that is sexual sin, then guess what you shouldn't be watching? Shows and movies that are glorifying sexual sin. You will not have authority over something that you are being entertained by. That's something that Lisa Brevere says, and I found it so fire because there's so much on TV that we watch in lieu of being entertained by it. And then yet we wanna have authority over it in our physical life. And God's like, you're literally <coughs> being entertained by it on the mm -hmm. TV shows, or you're listening to music that is glorifying this behavior. How do you think that then you're in that same setting that you're not gonna fall into that temptation when it's glorified in the things you're watching and you're listening to. And so we need to have our armor on. We need to be bold enough to leave rooms that are tempting or change the channel or change the radio or your podcast. I don't know, whatever you're listening to. <laughs> the radio really the gets radio. me. <laughs> I'm like, I, don't, I haven't listened to the radio since high school. But yeah, it's like <coughs> actually taking responsibility for what you're taking in. Yeah, I think the thing that I'm feeling right now, because obviously you all know lust is something I've struggled with. Um, I I began watching pornography at like age 13 or 14. I don't remember the exact age, but it was like, you know, keep in mind, over 50% of my life, right? And I think the thing that I've been feeling is, I remember talking to the guy who discipled me right after I became a believer. And I remember, I was like, man, I, I just can't wait till I can shake this thing, right? And he's like, Chad, that'll never go away. I'm like, well, <laughs> doom and gloom over here. He's like, no, like you will always battle with this. Like this is not something that we just like check off the list. Like, oh yeah, check lust off the list. Like, no, like this is something that we want to continually grow away from and you will get better at it. But this is something that don't leave it unchecked. And so the thing I'm feeling in my heart is I feel like there was a period of my walk with God where my growth was stunted because my willingness to just fall back into it every few months, right? And I think that now I'm I'm noticing like a depth of me wanting to grow where I'm like, I'm like, wow, I can feel the spirit stirring within me where I'm like, wow, I realized that I was like feeding myself sugar. And I don't know how much you know about sugar, but sugar can do a lot of things to your body. It, it can also stunt growth at certain ages. And I realized that that's what I was metaphorically doing. I was like stunting my growth. And so I was doing something that was gonna keep me at a place where that's just, I'm now I'm stuck in it. And I don't know if you're someone who you feel stuck in any of these temptations, but that's what these things can do to us. That's what these sins can do is they can stunt our growth. And I wanna to continue to grow more into the Lord, but sometimes it's easy for us to look back at our old life and be like, wow, like, but that, I really enjoyed that. But I didn't really enjoy it because I would partake in all these different things and it left me so empty and it left me to the feet of Christ, which is praise God, and then he made me full. And that's what Jesus encourages us to do is like put off your former self, forget the things of old and walk into the new creation that you are. Yeah. But I realized that for a season of my life, I was like a new creation putting on the same clothes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and so I think we can get really practical on the whole lust one regarding mm -hmm. there's apps, there's accountability, there's, you know, put your phone in the kitchen at night. There's all these different things, but I think attacking the heart of it first, and we can actually, if you guys want more on this yeah. topic, it's such a prevalent one. But I think the big thing is just, I, w I was really realizing how much I was stunting my growth and how I wasn't helping anything. And I actually was numbing a deeper pain that I was feeling mm -hmm. in my life. And it was only gonna hurt me in the future. It was gonna hurt intimacy with my wife. It was like not gonna help anything. It was gonna make me feel disconnected. It was gonna give me an unrealistic point of view on these things. And so, yeah, I feel like I have a lot to say on this topic, but. And I also just wanna, empower you inside of this because in Galatians 5 it says you've been set free now stay 
free. Yeah. And you only stay free through the power of Christ. But guess what? You are no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to the spirit. And so there is blessing and obedience. And I just want you guys to know that you have weapons to fight against these temptations. You can resist the enemy and he will flee when you use the name of Jesus. When you are tempted, he always provides a way out so that you don't have to slip back into sin. You don't wear those shackles anymore. You've been set free by the power of the cross. So if you feel like you might gossip or you feel like you might slip into lust or you feel like any of these things that we've been talking about are the the vice for you, the thing that you struggle with the most, find a scripture, have it in your tool belt and pray that the Holy Spirit, that you would be sensitive to his leading and his voice and his conviction and thank him that he's given you tools to fight against these things practically. Yeah, no temptation has seized you except what is common to man, but God is faithful for he will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you can endure and he will always provide a way out for you to stand up underneath him. Mm -hmm. That's like my memory verse for temptation. Yeah. That's a real one. Like remember the guy I was telling you about who discipled me? Yeah. We went through different memory verses on a lot of these types of temptations. Yeah. You know, for example, the one on greed, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Mm -hmm. Every person must give what they have decided in their heart, not under compulsion or out of reluctancy for God loves a cheerful giver. So doing what Tori is sharing and getting a memory verse for these types of things, it like we have to do what Psalm 119 verses 19 and 11 say, I stored my word in your heart that I may not sin against you, O mm -hmm. Lord. And so like we have to store this stuff. Yeah. We can't just willy nilly walk through life and expect just to do well. It's like, yeah. no, like sanctification is a process. Yeah. Being purified is a process. And we have to like embrace that process yeah. and not just expect it to happen passively. And Y'all find joy in this because genuinely when we walk in the ways of the Lord, we will experience the favor that comes with obedience. We will experience the contentment and the, the joy that comes with having that closeness with him. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe that this is something that we shouldn't look at as this big obstacle in our life that we should be scared of, <clears throat> but instead these things that we can fight against knowing that we have the tools to fight against it and experience the abundance that God has for us in the here and now. Can I share one more thing? Yeah. I think we can do We literally, every time we're like, <laughs> let's do quick 10 minute videos. We literally yeah, it doesn't can't work. do that. Um, one of the last thing I'll say is, um, one of the last things, the last thing I wanna say is all of like the way that God is calling us to live is to help humankind flourish, mm -hmm. to help the fruition of mankind. And so greed does not help my neighbor. Mm -hmm. It doesn't help my neighbor, right? Lust does not help my family, mm -hmm. right? Like laziness that we didn't even get to, like yeah. we have so many more, but we're running out of time. Like these things are not helpful. Mm -hmm. And so gossip is not helpful. Mm -hmm. And so as you're debating on these topics, it might, do I really struggle with, with the temptation to be prideful? If you're questioning that, then maybe you do. Maybe you should write down and do the opposite of what your what your flesh is telling you what to do and do what the spirit's telling you to do. But we have to think about what is helpful mm -hmm. to mankind. Yeah. So again. Go check out hillsdale.edu slash masters for those free online college courses. They are so informative and so educational. Mm -hmm. We've been working with them all year and we still love them. They will equip you. Yes. And, and so. entertaining you which is cool. The best kind of entertainment. Yes. Yeah, love it. Okay, well, we love you guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Adios. Bye.